Thank you, Alison. Anusha Izadi is a fourth year marketing PhD student at the Bauer College of Business. She has always been curious about how our experiences and the environment we live in shape our behavior. After being an engineer for eight years, she found Bauer an excellent place to nurture her curiosity and human behavior. She loves experiencing new things and spending time in nature. Allow me to introduce Anusha Azadi, who will talk about how wind direction can influence consumer creativity. We often overlook simple things in our lives. We take for granted the simple things that constitute our everyday experience. We don't realize their impact on us, especially on our brains. Let me explain what I mean. Have you ever thought that a slight change in temperature might affect the type of movie you choose to watch? Probably not, but researchers have actually shown that when you're cold, you seek psychological warmth and you're more likely to watch a romantic movie, say Roman Holiday. In my research, I investigate simple things, simple things often hidden in plain sight, which profoundly affect us as consumers and as human beings. And today I'm going to walk you through one of those things. As an elemental feature of our environment and a part of our most common experiences, wind is a part of our everyday life. We can see its presence everywhere, not only when we walk outside, but all the time in movies or in popular song lyrics, sometimes as metaphors in poetry and, of course, in art. Even animals respond to the wind. According to ancient Greek philosophy, wind was an elemental feature of the universe. But ancient Greeks were not alone in their preoccupation with wind. Recently, I read that the Navajo Indians view the wind as a holy thing, and they believe that we all have a guiding wind inside us. But despite the fact that wind has been the subject of great metaphysical inquiry and still remains very present in our lives, it's been neglected from a research standpoint. In this work, I became interested in investigating this neglected element. But I'm not a philosopher or a priest. Rather than inquiring about the true nature of wind, I was interested in what our experience of wind is like. How do we respond to wind? And what features of wind are most relevant to these responses? Put more simply, wind is the movement of air. But this movement itself has many different characteristics. Wind can be characterized by its speed or by its temperature. It can also be characterized by its direction. And the focus of this research is on wind direction. In all of our studies, we held wind speed and temperature constant in order to examine the effect of wind direction. So why does wind direction matter? I'm sorry, this is... So why does wind direction matter? Um, we seem to have an innate preference to face into the wind. Just think of people as they board a cruise ship or a ferry. So this was a picture of my advisor's daughter. According to her mother, she spent the entire trip with her face into the wind, utterly absorbed in the sensation. And we never seem to outgrow the desire to head to the front of the boat, feel the wind in our face. But our preference for upwind is not necessarily about pure enjoyment. It could have an evolutionary base as well. Think about a hunter. Hunters instinctually face the wind when they hunt. Upwind, they can smell their prey in order to track it it's also less likely that they will be detected or become the hunter. Although we no longer depend on wind direction for dinner procurement, 
our deep-seated evolutionary relationship with wind suggests that wind can have a powerful effect on us. The logic of my hypothesis is pretty straightforward. Upwind is physiologically refreshing. Because it is physiologically refreshing, it is psychologically energizing. And when people are psychologically energized, they tend to be more, crea tend to be more creative. Medical research has found that we have a stronger physiological response to the wind that is in our face rather than at our backs. This can explain why upwind is more physiologically refreshing. In this research, we go beyond these findings to show that facing the wind is also more psychologically energizing and that people who are psychologically energized tend to be more creative. But what do I mean by becoming more creative? <coughs> I'm not promising that facing the wind will turn you into the next Leonardo da Vinci or Albert Einstein, but it can make you more creative in your everyday life. Imagine driving to an important job interview. Something as simple as tilting the air conditioning vent toward your face might help you frame interview answers in a more creative way. So to test this simple hypothesis, we first conducted a study at the Hermann Park Kite Festival in March. We randomly approached individuals from different directions, either from upwind which meant that the person was facing the wind, or from downwind, which meant that the wind was blowing at the person's back. Each person was then asked to perform a standard creativity task. We told them, imagine you're going, uh, if you could travel, if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? Our hypothesis was that people facing the wind would choose much more extraordinary out-of-the-box destinations than people with the wind at their backs. And that's exactly what we found. People in the downwind condition named travel destinations like Galveston or Florida, while people in the upwind condition said they would travel to places like Iceland, Australia, or Machu Picchu. These findings were intriguing. But considering that we spend the majority of our time indoors, we wanted to see if we could leverage the wind effect in an indoor environment as well. So we followed up in the lab. We used fans to simulate the experience of wind in a controlled lab experiment. There were two conditions in this experiment. In one condition, participants faced the fan. In the other condition, the fan blew at participants' backs. We asked all the participants to perform another standard creativity task. We told them, imagine you're going to another planet, somewhere else in the galaxy that is very different from Earth. Imagine finding an animal there. Your task is to draw pictures of that animal and write a description of it. Independent judges then rated the creativity of each drawing based on standard rules. After coding the data, we found that people in the upwind condition were much more creative in their animal creation than people in the downwind condition. Although we manipulated wind in the lab, our findings point to inexpensive, accessible ways that we can leverage wind in our everyday lives to boost creativity. We all face situations in our lives where we need creativity and a fresh perspective. So next time, when you are stuck on a difficult project or paper, and you decide to take a walk to clear your head, remember that a simple decision to walk into the wind might give you the creativity you need to see things in a different light. Thank you.